A healthy Christian says, I'm at this level, but I'm going to the penthouse. Come on. That's what a healthy Christian says. So listen, he wants us to go deeper. He wants us to do greater things. He wants us to go to the next level. He wants us to go higher. Say higher. But here's how. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Okay? If you're writing it down, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. This is what it says. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Say new. I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. There is nothing too hard or impossible for our God. Amen. And so what he's saying, he says, I'm going to do a new thing. Say new. new. And he says, I'm going to do it right now. Say now. now. What God was saying is, listen, there's been a huge attack on the body of Christ. This spirit called discouragement. Okay, And this spirit has come so strongly that even some in this place, the Lord told me, that even if it was a fleeting thought, you've thought of suicide. you thought of harming yourself. And the Lord was telling me that there's a spirit of discouragement going through my body, not just at living word, but going through my body. He says, and what's happened is they've struggled with discouragement. And I'll be honest with you, I've struggled with discouragement. Because when I see you hurt, I hurt. That's the heart that he gives a pastor. So I struggle with discouragement. When I see you struggling, when I'm saying, Lord, you're good. And then I see you struggling. I know he's still good, but I see you struggling. So I struggle with your discouragement. I struggle with your struggles. I feel what you feel. You may not understand that, but you're not called to be a pastor. So you're not called to understand it. Just take my word. I carry your burdens the way God carries your burdens. That's the heart that he gives a pastor. And the spirit of discouragement is from the pit of hell. Because it would cause you to end your life before you even walk into the fullness of God. It would cause you to walk away from church before you even walk into the fullness of God. It would cause you to walk away from your spouse, walk away from your children, walk away from all those things. It would cause you to do those things before you ever see the hand of the Lord strong and mighty in your life. It's it's whole intent is to get you to believe that you're worthless. It's, it's, it's intent is to get you to believe that you'll never change or somebody else will never change. It's whole belief and the spirit is so strong. Like I said, people have actually had a fleeting thought of suicide. Ridiculous, I know, because nobody wants to admit that. But God told me there's several in here that it came through your mind. Whether you admit it or not. But don't give up hope, beloved. Because I guarantee you, when the greatest tribulations and the greatest storms come, is when the greatest victory is about to fall. It has to get the darkest before it gets light. There's a shift happening and it's going to remove things that we used to battle with. It's going to remove things in our lives. I'm telling you, God is making us feel dry. So that, why do we feel dry? Oh, well, you know... Uh, The music's not as good as it used to be. Or Pastor Jesse's not preaching the way he used to be. Or I don't feel the spirit the way I used to. There's got to be something wrong with the church. Look in the mirror. I've told you from the beginning, even when the spirit of God was rushing in here. I'm telling you from the beginning that the presence of God, the level of the presence of God is a direct reflection of the people. But if you're sitting there with this spirit of discouragement, how much are we going to be praising God? God is about to remove the debris that's in your life. The debris that's in your life. The messiness that's in your life. The sin that's in your life. God is getting ready to remove the debris with a strong wind. I'm telling you, if you're not anchored down in Jesus, you're going to get blown away. I guarantee it. 
We need to embrace the changes and not be afraid. We need to fight discouragement because this is what God told me. He says, tell them I've got several waves coming. I said, what kind of waves are you talking about, Lord? I'm thinking, oh, the crush, rush, rolling mighty waves. I'm thinking, he says, I've got waves of turnaround coming. That's what he said. I've got waves of turnaround coming. We're going to turn around your marriage. We're going to turn around your children. We're going to turn around your finances. We're going to turn around your health. The Lord says he's got waves of turnaround coming, church. And he also said he was going to revive many wounded warriors. What I saw was wounded warriors on the battlefield and no Christians. We were walking right by the Christians that had fallen. We were walking right by the ones that were hurt. We were too busy with work, too busy with school, too busy with church. Come on. And we weren't even tending to the wounded warriors. We were too busy. They should have known better. And we walked right by them. And the Lord says, I'm going to do with this wind. He says, this wind is going to heal them. It's going to revive them. In fact, they're going to have a strong part in what I'm going to be doing. He says, because I, the Lord, restore. I don't forget. God said that everything that's been stolen from you in the past 10 years is about to get repaid. Everything that's been stolen from you in the past 10 years is about to get repaid. And he said, everything that you've done for others sacrificially in the past 10 years is about to be rewarded. Okay. I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to finish with a hard word. Say hard. Because sometimes we need that Jesus slap, as George calls it. So I'm going to finish with a hard word, but I'm going to do it the same reason why we spank our children when they're young, because we love them. You ready? Yeah, nobody's ready, right? I said, are you ready? Yes. I'm going to give you a hard word, okay? And, but it's just the truth, because there's an old saying, right? It says, when the going gets tough, what does it say? The tough get going. When the going gets tough... The tough get going. But I think we've misinterpreted this. Because what happens is when the going get tough around here, we get going away from the church. We don't get going on anything. We go away from the church. When we have something gets tough in our marriage, we go away from our husbands and wives. When it gets tough for the children, we go away from our children. When it gets tough on finances, come on, we're going to stop going away from the tithing. And when you feel dry or you're spinning your wheels or whatever, you walk away from church like there's something wrong with church. But the truth is there's something wrong with you. You need to understand this. I tell you this because I love you. I tell you this because you have to know when you walk away from the problems, that's not the tough getting going. You're leaving. You're giving up. You're letting the enemy take from you what God wants to give you. My brothers and sisters, look, it does not mean to get going away from the church. It does not mean to get away from your spouse. It does not mean to get away from your problems. It doesn't mean to get away from your financial tribulations or whatever you're going through. That's not what it means when it says, when the tough get, when it gets tough, goes blah, blah, blah. blah. When the the going gets tough. You know what it means? I'll tell you what it means. When the pressure pushes you down, you push right back. That's what it means. That's what it means. It means we need to embrace the dryness. Not look for reasons on why people are dry. Not look for reasons on why this or why that. Embrace the dryness and say, Lord, I understand I'm dry and I understand that the oil comes from you. We need to embrace the spinning the wheels because that means we're no longer, our soul is no longer content with the level we're at. We need to embrace the tribulations and call it pure joy instead of running 
every time we go through something. God has something new for you, church. He's got something deeper for you, church. He's got something greater for you. He's got something higher for you. He's got something that you or I cannot even possibly imagine. And I'm not talking just in heaven. I'm saying on earth as it is in heaven. God has something greater and massive for you and God's kingdom will come and thy will, his will will be done and it's the tough ones that are going to go in the right direction instead of going out the door. Beloved, I'm telling you, during this push that the Lord is showing me, this wind that he's showing me, there will be a mass exodus of people from the church into the world. You want to know why? Because we're going from the church age to the kingdom age. And the king will have it his way or no other way. It's no longer going to be, well, I'm just going to go and sleep with somebody on Saturday night and then show up to church in the morning and give them an hour and a half of my time and then go live my life. It's no longer going to be like that because his Holy Spirit is getting ready to pour out in such a way that you won't be able to stand in the presence Because of the guilt you're going to feel. And the old adage says, how does it go, George? When the going gets tough, when the going gets tough, when the Holy Spirit comes and starts to, I don't know, reveal our sin, it's going to be a mass exodus. Because people are not going to want to deal with it. They're not tough enough to say, fine, Lord, you're right. I'm wrong. So I tell you the strong word today. God deserves your praise whether you're going through something or not. God deserves your worship whether your life is perfect or not. God deserves your tithe whether you think you can afford it or not. Because he's God. Not a man. Not a person. He deserves the best that you can give him. Because he gave you life. And after he gave you life, he gave you a way to have eternal life. My brothers and sisters, we are coming to the kingdom age. In some senses, we already have started We have already started. Christianity is not the easiest religion or belief system in the world. God told me it will be the hardest. You want to know why? Because the whole world's going to be against us. Your family's going to be against you. Your parents are going to be against you. Your wife, your husband's going to be against you. Your kids are going to be against you. Your neighbor's going to be against you. The government is going to be against you. It's going to be the hardest belief system in the world. You don't want to believe me? Go to China. Go to India. Go to Pakistan. Go to Africa. Go to any other country and see them get chopped up by machetes because they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Beloved, beloved of God, will you get going or will you leave? That is up to you. Totally up to you. But I tell you what, as the worship team gets together again, as we start to worship him just for a little bit longer, If you're not sure that you can make it, if you're honest enough to say, I'm not sure I can make that, then I want you to come up to this altar because I am going to lay hands on you and I am going to pray for you and I am going to impart to you a fresh touch from God because that's what he told me to do. But you got to be honest enough. George said something earlier. He said, God had all these presents to give, but nobody was sure if they wanted them. God has a present for you today. You know what it is? More of him. That's his present. He's going to give you more of him. Will you stand to your feet?
take them down. Listen, if you're not sure, if you're going to be honest, and you're not sure you can make it, I want you to come up here. Just be honest. Just just be honest. Just line up right across the front right there. Because I'm going to go lay hands on you. See, what we have to do is come to a point where we've settled in our spirit that come hell or high water, it's Jesus or nothing. But you know how you know you settled that in your spirit? You know that because God is the most important thing to you. The most important thing. And you know when God's the most important thing, what happens? You go to church. You go to prayer group. You go to men's discipleship. You give your first tenth. That's what he asked for. I'm just telling you, you know I don't preach on finances, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You give your first tenth. That means you give it before you pay your bills. That's what first means. Beloved, we are coming to a time where second best is not good enough. Because the enemy is looking. Seeking whom he can devour. Who can he trick? Who can he cause to think differently? You see, you can look at me and you can look at my fallacies and say, why do I even listen to him? It's because God chose the foolishness of this world. I'm the fool. But I've settled in my heart that I'll be the fool if it means I serve him. I've settled in my heart that it's not about what I obtain in this life. It's what I'm building for the next. I've settled in my heart that he comes first in all things. That means he comes first in my marriage. He comes first with my children. He comes first with my ties. He comes first. Even if I'm sick, I don't curse him. I thank him for the healing that he's doing. God is removing those things that we battle with. And it's totally up to you. Totally up to you if you're going to let him. Is it in your heart to go? It's in your heart, right? That's why you're going. That's why. Because it's right there. Remove everything else. Hallelujah. The word says, impart on the As he is in this world, so am I. Jesus. So he knows what we've gone through. And the word also says to him that to he who overcomes, I will give the right to sit at my throne, just as I have overcome and sit at my father's throne. Straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up. I remove the distraction. We go to you. Focus and purpose. In your Focus and purpose. Focus and purpose. We go to you. Enter in your throne. A new level, Lord. A new level, Lord. A new level, Lord. He is at the throne, we can go to the throne. He is at the throne, so we can go to the throne. He is at the throne, so we can go to the throne. Cause as He is, so am I. A new level. As He is, so am I. Impartation, impartation. As He is, so am I. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. 
receive in the name of Jesus a new way of thinking. A new way of thinking. A new way of thinking. You level, you level, you level, that raise you level, dreams, visions in me, lives in you, discipleship, the same spirit that raised Jesus, impartation, lives in me. I break all generational curses, saying, You will walk that in the ways of God, lives you will walk in the ways of God, lives in you. Was raised, we he are walk raised. in the ways of God. He was raised, we are raised. He was raised, we are raised. He heals, we can heal. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same yesterday. As he is, so am I. And as he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. More, Father. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Father. Dead. Not in your own we understanding. Raised the Not dead. in your own understanding. We raise the dead. We raise the dead. Faith means you we don't understand. Raise the dead. We raise the dead. We raise the dead. Restore we raise the dead. He is the light. Father, 
sings over us. He sings over us. He sings over us. He sings over us. He dances for us. He dances for us. He dances for us. He dances for us. More, Father. More, Lord. More, Father. He can create. More, Lord. He can More, Father. create. Your will, your purpose. He can create. We can do it. More, Lord. We can More, create. Father. We can create dreams, dreams we and visions. We can create we prophetic can create. insight, Father. We can create. We can More. create. More fire of God, fire of God, fire of God. And I see it, so am I. And I see it, so am I. I see it, so am I. Fire of evangelism. Fire of evangelism. Evangelism, Lord. Love. He is oh. love. He is love. More. We can More. be love. More. More. He More. is love. We can be love. He is love. We can be love. He is love. We can be love. He is love. We can be love. Understanding, he more presence, more dreams and visions, he more. Is holy. more strength. He can be holy. He strength. is holy. Strength. Strength. He can be holy. He is holy. We can be holy. Cause as he is, so am I. And as he is, so am I. And as he is, so am I.
more, 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 more. A new way of thinking. Kingdom. Kingdom. We all have to learn kingdom now, Lord. Kingdom. 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 A new way. Keep a pad and paper nearby. I impart into you kingdom thinking right now. I impart into you kingdom thinking right now. You're not going to recognize your own thoughts. Jesus. Lord, bless my wife. Rest, peace, trust. Father, I declare my covering over her. I proclaim to all who would hear both in the natural and in the supernatural my covering over her that nothing shall by any means harm her Holy Spirit come give her a new way of thinking Let the old man pass away. Let the new creature arise. For there are greater visions. There are greater things to see, the Lord says. And yes, you will hear my audible voice. And it will scare you at first, the Lord says. You'll be like my children Israel that did not want to hear it anymore. He says, but then I'll come in a whisper until you're ready to see the hills melt like wax. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Love it. Be ready. I, I couldn't share it with you earlier, but the Lord just told me as I was up there and we were talking about pressing in, I literally saw the roof open up and the walls move back and the walls move to the side and move to the back. And it was a whole different building and it was a whole different place. And it was probably five, six hundred people all with their hands lifted up, worshiping him. Now, I want you to understand something. And maybe you don't hear this from other pastors, but you're going to hear it from me. If you're here right now today and I share that with you, it's because you're going to help lead those people. So you don't under, maybe you don't understand that when I talk about church growth and stuff, it's not because I need to have more people hear me. Oh, Lord. You need to understand how are they going to know how to worship unless they're watching you worship. With your hands lifted up. When they see you walking up to the front, understanding that the altar is open even during the praise and worship. 
when they see you turning around and praying for one another, when they see you standing there and giving and, and standing there and standing on the promises of God, how are they going to know unless they watch you? Church, you're called to leadership. God's called you to leadership. It's not about titles or positions. It's about your position before the Lord. I can see every single one of you in the front rows. Not having to look back, but just raising your hand, worshiping the Lord, showing them this is how it's done. This is how you get on your face and not worry about who watches you before, you, before the Lord. This is, this is how the children worship because we trained them how to worship with us instead of sending them to the back where they're out of the way. I'm telling you, God's getting ready. God's getting ready. And we need to get ready. This Saturday, 10 a.m., 10 a.m., women's ministry, okay? I'm coming for the food. No, I'm just kidding. I'll be here. <laughs> There's something going on because God gave Irene this two months ago, three months ago. And I can't tell you what it is, but I will tell you this. It's from the Lord. And I'll be honest with you, I think personally that there will be some breaking of things if you take the time to come. Okay? How many of you need a little breaking? Okay? If you take the time to come, ladies, and you know what? Invite somebody. Tell them. It's just a little word, and then we're going to eat. Invite somebody. Get them over here. Because we're coming to a time in history where it's Jesus or nothing. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. Now I need a show of hands. Do you all forgive me for giving you the hard word? Most of you do. I appreciate it. All right, all right. Most of you do. Okay. I'm going to give it to you because the Lord told me to give it to you. He gave it to me first. That's all I got to say. Father, we lift up these tithes and offerings to you, Father, as a sacrifice from your people, Lord God, to further your kingdom, Lord God. And we ask that you multiply both the offerings and the tithes, Lord, for yourself and for your people, Lord God. And we ask this in Jesus' name.